Hi, hello, and welcome. My name is Lacey, and this week I'm furthering my investigation into fluid painting. Specifically, why did my painting crack? One factor that we have previously identified is silicone causing cracking, but what if you didn't use silicone? Why is it cracking? My hypothesis is paint thickness, both in the consistency that you mix up as well as what is left on the canvas. So in order to, what I'm gonna be testing today is what's left on the canvas. So what I want to do is test both water and Floetrol because Floetrol has all sorts of claims that that's what's going to stop cracking. Um, but in my experience, that's not what I've seen. So I'm actually gonna do a direct test of this. And in order to try to keep these variables the same, I looked this up and traditionally, what they say for craft paint is you should, you should do two parts of the craft paint to one part of the median medium. So I will be doing two parts of craft paint, one part water in one painting, and two parts of craft paint and one part of Floetrol in another test. And first, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to leave them on the canvas super thick. So I'm gonna make sure I mix up just a ton of this paint and I'm gonna leave it on there as thick as I possibly can. And then in the second one, I'm gonna really stretch it so that it actually is not very thick left on the canvas to dry. So to show you the ratios so that I can explain consistency and things like that, I'm gonna show you exactly what I'm doing here. For the first test, I'm gonna be mixing up 45 milliliters of total liquid. So 30 of that is going to be paint and 15 is water so that it is a two to one ratio. And then I'm going to repeat that with the Floetrol so that I have for the second painting for each color, 45 milliliters of total paint or liquid, which will be 30 milliliters paint and 15 milliliters of Floetrol. I do acknowledge that sometimes people further thin their paint with some water, but I'm just trying to just see if Floetrol is the end all be all of preventing cracking. So we're going to mix these up, mix them very well. It's always key to really get to the bottom and fully mix these together. I will say that right away, I think this test is going to be a little bit off because the water mixture is a lot thinner because Floetrol is a lot more viscous of a liquid than pure water is. So I think I'm gonna end up having to do another test in a different video where I make them about the same consistency, but that is already one variable that I can tell I'm not convinced is going to be an accurate head-to-head -head comparison, but I've devised this and I'm going to go forward. So I'll mix up the rest of my colors and then I always go ahead and write on the back of each canvas what test I'm about to perform. So this is going to be the lots of paint left on the canvas test and which one is water, which one is Floetrol before we actually get started. I'm going to be doing the dirty cup method for both of these canvases and we'll do the flow trawl first. And again, it is very thick, but I am alternating between all of my colors that I pre-mixed with that two to one ratio of paint and flow trawl. And we'll go ahead and get that all in the cup, really get a ton of paint in there, more than I would typically put on a canvas personally. But that's one of those things that I think comes from experience and from after you get to know this on how much paint do you really need on the canvas and how much is going to cause a less than optimal result once dry. So we'll go ahead and flip this over and then I'm going to slowly move this to the edges and I might not get full coverage. I will probably take a little bit from the drippings that do come off because I'm not gonna be able to fully avoid this coming off of the canvas because I do want to replicate at least 
kind of a normal pour, but we're going to leave it as thick as we possibly can. Then we're going to move over to the left side for the water test. Again, adding a ton of paint, doing a dirty cup where I layer and I add as much paint as I've mixed up, which is way more than I need for the actual canvas, before I go ahead and flip this. And we're gonna try to do the same exact thing. I'm already a little bit worried that the paint is so thin that it's going to want to run off, so I'm gonna really try to keep this in the middle. Maybe I hopefully even have a bit of a saggy canvas that will help keep it there. But again, these are the two that I'm expecting to crack. I actually expect both of these to crack because I'm leaving the paint so thick. And you'll see how much this one moves a lot faster than the previous one did just because the material is a lot more viscous, but I barely moved it. It's on there, it's going to drip a bit, but hopefully it doesn't move too much more and we keep it really, really thick. Hit them with a quick torch to pop any bubbles. And let's move on to test number two. Okay, so we're going to basically do the same thing we did before using the same ratios, two to one, paint to medium, except I'm not gonna mix up as much paint as before since I'm my plan is to really stretch these and I don't wanna waste as much. So it'll be 20 milliliters of paint to 10 milliliters of water and 20 milliliters of paint to 10 milliliters of Floetrol per color. Okay, so it's time to repeat what we did last time, except for to stretch these really thin. Now my hypothesis is that neither of these will crack because they will be left with a nice thin layer of paint on the canvas, therefore making sure that the paint can dry evenly as it dries. So we'll start with the flow trawl again. Again, a dirty cup. I might not even use quite all of the paint that I have just because this is meant to be stretched and then we'll move on to the water. As you watch me stretch this, I'm going to kind of talk about why I think that it cracks when it's thicker paint. And that's in essence that you have a ton of liquid and the top layer, which is exposed to the air, evaporates first, therefore it dries, and it becomes tight or taut. Then the layers below it still have moisture in them, so they're trying to dry and evaporate the water from them, and because the top layer is already dry, they have to break through to do that. And so that's what I think the cracking is doing, is that basically as it tries to dry deeper and deeper into that puddle of paint, it has to crack open the paint kind of through expansion um, and contraction of, cause paint contracts as it dries, but it's more um, thick and bigger when it's wet. And so as the top layer dries, then it has to open to release the pressure from the bottom layers. I'm not a scientist, but that's my general understanding of it and what I've observed. Next, we're going to finish stretching these and really what we just need to do is wait because we're not actually gonna see many initial results in this first part of this test because we need to see what they're like when they're dry. So I'll revisit this as they're drying as well as once they're fully dry. This is the thick water one, the thin water one, thin flow trawl, and thick flow trawl. So this is the next morning. It's been about 10 hours since I poured these. And I'm not really getting any signs yet of cracking on 
any. This one is completely dry, so no cracking. This one is almost dry. I don't suspect it will have any cracking. And this one is still quite wet. And there's a little cracking in this one corner. Okay, it's been about 18 hours since I poured these. The one we're looking at here is water and it was poured very thick and left thick on the canvas. I'm not, I'm surprised by this. I thought this would have cracking, but I'm not seeing any. Wondering if that's because it was so thin. Here is the thin water. So I really stretched this, made sure there wasn't really standing paint on there. It's completely dry and no cracking. This one is the flow trawl where I really stretched it to make sure there wasn't standing paint. I'm not seeing cracking. I just see some little kind of divots. And then here is the flow trawl where I left things real thick on here. And I am getting cracking. So you'll see some there, and there, and there. It's been two days since I poured these, so they're fully dry. These two are the water. The one on the right hand side is the very, um, one I stretched really far to get excess paint off. The one on the left, I didn't. There are a couple small cracks on this one. But I only see them right here. There are no cracks on the one that I really stretched. And these two are the flow trawl. So the one on the right is the one that I left really thick, and the one on the left is the one that I stretched. The one that I stretched doesn't have any cracks. It has a lot more cells than the water one does. The one on the right, however, that I left really thick has it's cracked all over. I think it looks kind of cool, but if you don't want cracking, you don't want to leave it thick. So I'm calling my hypothesis at least partially confirmed. I do think there was something to do with how thin I made the paint with the water versus the flow trawl, but it's definitely the main thing is leaving paint thick on the canvas to dry is what causes the actual cracking. Stay tuned because I plan on retesting this um, to give flow trawl and paint kind of more of an even playing field. Thank you so much for watching. If you'd like to see more videos like this, please subscribe to my channel. If you're local to Northern Colorado and would like to take a class, visit rebelunicorncrafts.com to see my class listings. If you'd just like to see what I'm up to, visit my Instagram at rebelunicorncrafts. Or if you'd like to see my art, you can visit my other Instagram at lacywalkerart. Thank you again for watching and I hope you have a magically creative day.